How would you feel if you had the opportunity to land a major sink placement and then lost that opportunity simply because you were not prepared? This is a story I've heard way too many times, both directly and indirectly. Stories of artists losing out on major sink placements because maybe they didn't have a one-stop agreement or a split sheet with their co-writers. Maybe they didn't have a work for hire agreement signed with the session musicians that they hired. Maybe they simply didn't even have the instrumental version of their song which was needed for the placement. Landing one of these placements could be career or life changing and they can bring in obviously thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars. If you're not prepared, you might miss out on the opportunity. There's a variety of things that could go wrong which would prevent you from landing one of these placements. My goal with this video is to help prevent you from ever being in that situation. Now, first and foremost, you have to have great music. It's not really the topic of this video, but just to make sure that we're all on the same page, you have to have great music that is professionally produced, and that's sort of just the barrier uh, to entry when it comes to sync. Okay, so let's assume you have great music and you want to be able to land sync placements with your music. You want to avoid being in the situation in which I just described, so what do you need to do? In this video, I'm gonna show you the assets that you absolutely must have in order to be prepared to land syncs with your music. I'm also going to give you the templates that I use myself for these assets 100% free. Then I'm gonna show you some things that aren't necessarily must-haves, but they're definitely great to have and they will increase your chance to land sync placements. First and foremost, in addition to having great music, you need to make sure that you are signed up with your local PRO or your performing rights organization. If you live in the US and want a recommendation, I highly recommend that you sign up with BMI. I also recommend that you sign up as a publisher with your PRO. Now that is a topic for another video and if you'd like me to cover that kind of stuff, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll make another video just dedicated to that. If you plan on not signing your music exclusively with a music publisher, you also need to make sure that you're registering your songs with your PRO. Again, if you want me to cover this stuff more in depth, please leave a comment below and I will make a video uh, dedicated just to kind of PROs and signing your music and all that kind of stuff. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the assets that you're actually going to need. If you look down in the description for this video, you can actually find a link to the folder I'm about to show you, which you can download 100% free. With that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the computer and I'll kind of walk you through these assets myself just so you can kind of see what you'll need. All right, so if you download the folder, this is what you're going to receive. And obvious disclaimer that I need to get out of the way, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. You know, before you take action on any of this, make sure you consult a lawyer, do what you need to do. Um, just to be abundantly clear, I am not a lawyer. So these templates are templates that I've used. Most of these I've acquired in either Facebook groups or from co-writers or even just from online websites that offer free templates. I have used all these templates myself and these are again what I use on pretty much every single song so they work just fine for me but before you take any action or whatever consult your lawyer all that good stuff so now that that's out of the way let's go ahead and get into it all right so if we take a look at this folder here you'll notice that I have three different templates and I will point out that I have two different versions of each. So there is a PDF version and a docs version. The PDF version, obviously you can just go ahead and use that if you wanna use it as is and fill it out manually or like print it out and use it. Otherwise, if you actually wanna go in and edit the document for your own liking and kind of to serve your needs, which I highly recommend that you do, you can go ahead and open the docs version. For the sake of the video, we're just gonna look at the PDF versions here. The first one we're gonna look at here is the one-stop song split sheet. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Now this is probably the most important one that we're gonna talk about today. And basically anyone who has a stake in the song, you know, all of your co-writers or anyone who has any stakes in the publishing or the copyright or the master, they all need to sign this form and fill it out. So this is very, very important. We'll just go ahead and kind of walk through this quickly. So as you see, song split sheet, and you just fill in the song title, whatever the artist name is and the BPM. And then in this top section here, just obviously going through, filling out the co-writer's names, email, their PRO affiliation and all of that info. I do have three writers listed on here because I've been doing a lot of work with the duo lately. So obviously we have three writers on the songs that we do. Now, if we come down to this section here, the additional notes and info, this section basically just says that there's no illegal samples in the song, which this is a very hot topic in the sync world as well, but I highly, highly recommend that you do not use splice loops or any other royalty-free loops in your music. Now, of course, if you're using like drums and percussion, that's a little bit, obviously that's not gonna be as problematic, but I highly, highly recommend that you stay away from melodic and harmonic loops, especially like this the whole splice loop all that kind of stuff just stay away from it now you might be thinking well these are royalty free loops what's the problem just take my word i mean there's plenty of people talking about it um if you think about it if everyone's using the same loops it's it just causes a lot of problems especially for those of you who are working in the instrumental world and you're working with exclusive publishers this actually is a pretty clear breach of contract so if you're giving music to a library and you're saying hey this is 100 original music but that music contains a loop that a million other producers are using it's not really original music 
magic and then everyone who uses that loop is going to get shazammed and just take my word for it avoid splice loops unless you're you know heavily modifying them but if you're new to this it's best to just avoid using loops altogether now down below that we have the part that's probably the most important well one of the most important parts on this form and that is the one stop agreement so we'll just go ahead and read through this quickly this document confirms that the writers listed above have full rights to individually sign off and clear any and all non-exclusive sync licensing publishing and or master use licensing sound recording deals on behalf of all songwriters publishers and master owners involved all writers listed above can absolutely and immediately authorize 100 percent clearance and represent the record non-exclusively as one stop so what this means is if you have this split sheet signed with your co-writers any one of you can sign off on a license and you might be thinking well what's the benefit of that let's say you and a co-writer from australia you know co-wrote a song and you have this agreement signed and you get hit up for an immediate license for your song maybe a music supervisor is working on a tv show and the song that they were going to use fell through and now they come across your song and it's a perfect fit so you get the email and say hey can we have this within the hour you know this is urgent this is a huge placement and you might be thinking well my co-writer lives in australia and it's the middle of the night and i can't get a hold of them right now but if you have this song sheet and you know the one-stop agreement filled out then you can sign off on that on behalf of them and you just save the placement. And of course at the bottom here, everyone's gonna sign and date and that is that one. The next one we're gonna look at here is this work for hire template. Now this is an agreement that you need to use for basically anyone who is involved in the creation of the song but does not have a stake in the song. So what that means is let's say you hire some session musicians or even if you hire a producer who contributes musically to the song but you are retaining 100% ownership of the song, you know they're not getting any back end royalties or any writer share, you need to make sure that they fill out and sign this form. Now you might be thinking well yeah I had some people play on my record but they're friends and we had a verbal agreement so everything's fine right? Um, no, everything is not fine. Just to kind of lay out a very basic situation, uh, which is a big reason why this agreement exists. Let's say you had some friends playing your song. Maybe you had a friend play down some guitar parts and yes, you had a verbal agreement that, you know, they don't own any part of the song, it's your song. But what happens when you land a major ad or a major placement and now they're seeing that song that they played on all over TV or all over whatever and they're thinking, okay, where's my money? If you don't have this agreement signed, then you just made some major, major headaches and you might have people's careers on the line. So just avoid that headache and just make sure you get all this stuff signed. So if you hire someone to play in your record, you hire a producer who contributes musically, just do yourself a favor and get them to sign this and you'll be good to go. All right, so let's take a look at this one now. You'll see it's pretty straightforward. This is the work for hire agreement. As you can see, singer, musician, release contract, and you can edit this to your liking if you need to use it for a producer or whatever. Fill out the song name, session dates. I mean, you can kind of go through this. It's very straightforward. You'll lay out who the contract is with, how much you're paying for them. It clearly lays out that they do not own any part of the song, that they don't get any royalties that they can't use the song without permission and so on. So make sure they get signature, dated, all that good stuff. And then they can choose whether or not they can, um, that you can use their name and likeness for the project. Very straightforward, but very, very great to have. Last but not least, let's go ahead and look at this music license agreement. This agreement is actually one that I had to find in quite a bit of a panic. A couple years ago, I had the chance to directly license my music to an ad for the first time, you know, not going through a library or any middleman. Basically, I had to provide this contract and I did not have one available. So I was reaching out to people, scouring the internet, trying to find one that I could tweak to my needs and that is the one that I'm going to show you now and again I'm giving you this totally free so you can tweak it to your needs and you know change whatever you need to fit the situation and so let's just go ahead and look through it and I'll kind of walk you through how it works all right so here we see this is the music license agreement now this first section you're going to want to fill out between you and the person that is licensing your music and these middle sections I'm not going to read all the way through this you can kind of go through it and tweak it to your needs but if you scroll down the next big important part that you're going to need to tweak is the duration here um, so like if you're licensing I think the when I use this, it was a three month ad. So I filled in the dates, you know, from the beginning through the end. And if they wish to exploit the work beyond that, then this is how much you're gonna charge, yada, yada. And this is actually something that a mentor of mine told me to put in. This wasn't in the original template, this part where if they continue to use it beyond the duration that they automatically get charged again and it enters a new contract period, that's important to have. And the fee for the license down here, obviously. Again, you can go through all this, kind of tweak it to your needs. I'm not a lawyer, again, obvious disclaimer. So consult a lawyer if you'd like, and then have everyone sign a date at the bottom. And again, this this is a license that I've used. Uh, the first time that I landed an ad directly, this is the exact contract and agreement that I used and works for my needs and I'm sure it'll work just fine for you too. So that covers all the assets that you'll need in terms of agreements, contracts, etc. And again, you can download this folder of templates 100% free down in the description with the link provided there. Now let's go ahead and cover the other must have assets. First, let's talk about song versions. Obviously, you're gonna need the full version of your song with vocals and everything. And it's very important to have high res files.
files. The industry standard as far as sync goes is typically 48K 24-bit WAV files. You're also gonna need the instrumental version of your song. This is very commonly needed and requested, and it's really as simple as just muting all the vocals and exporting the song. Now, if you have everything that I've mentioned so far, you're probably gonna be all right for most situations. Of course, things change and different situations can call for different needs. If at any point in the future, I feel like there's something I've missed or something else that I think should be added to this must-have list, I'll go ahead and make another dedicated video just for that, and I'll link it right now. If you wanna go above and beyond and even more so increase the chances of landing syncs with your music, let's go ahead and talk about some additional assets you should consider as well. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that it is much easier to collect and create these assets during the production and creative process. It's much harder to go back retroactively to create and collect these assets, especially if you have a lot of people involved in the process. If you want sync to be a big part of your music business or really even any part at all, I highly recommend that you think about this stuff and get it while it's easy, you know, while you're in the production and the creative process of making your music. I highly recommend that you work with a producer or a collaborator who can take your song all the way to the finish line, you know, someone who actually knows the sync business and is gonna understand all these assets that you need. That being said, I do think it's an appropriate time for a little bit of a shameless self plug. If you are looking for a producer for your song, you know, someone who's landed hundreds and hundreds of sync placements and kind of understand how all this stuff works. I am currently taking on new clients and if you are at all interested in hiring me for your project as a producer, you can go ahead and reach out via my website linked below. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about those additional assets. First, some additional song versions that you should consider is number one would be the acapella, which is as simple as it sounds. It's just the vocals from your song. And an important side note with all this stuff is that you need to make sure that all of your different versions are all the exact same length. That way, if an editor were to pull them in, they all line up as they should. Number two would be the TV or non-lyrical mix. And what this is, is basically just the instrumental plus any vocals that are, as the name suggests, non-lyrical. So if you have any background oohs and ahs and that kind of stuff, you know, anything that's not real words, not lyrical, go ahead and add those on and that's a great mix to have as well. And number three would be any submixes that you think would be appropriate. Now this really depends on your song. So if you think, you know, the piano and strings together would make a really great version or just bass and drums, any other versions that you think would be a great fit, go ahead and make those as well. Again, if you're working with a collaborator or a producer who understands this stuff, it really doesn't add a whole lot more work. It's just basically soloing those sections or those groups and exporting those versions as well. Now next would be mastered group stems. This is something that I've seen to be uh, more and more common over the last few years, especially as I've gotten into the world of music for movie trailers. This would be, for example, bounces of just lead vocals, background vocals, high synths, low synths, strings, drums and percussion, and so on. Now these are not individual stems, so it's not just exporting every single layer of your track. These are grouped stems that are actually running through your master channel. And again, it's very important that all these different stems are the same length and that they are the full length of your song. That way when an editor pulls them in, they all line up as they should and it's not, you know, just, it's not a mess for them. It doesn't create more headaches. Lastly, depending on the style or genre that you're making, it's a good idea to have a 60 second version, 30 second version, 15 second version, and maybe even a stinger version, which is typically seven to eight seconds. Now, if you're doing like a slower worship song or gospel or something that's really not gonna lend itself to ads and promos, you don't necessarily have to worry about this. But if you're doing anything more cinematic or pop or obviously trailer focused, these are all different versions that you're definitely gonna wanna have. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Like I kind of mentioned before, if I think there's anything else that you should absolutely have or any other assets that come up or if there's something I forgot, I'll go ahead and make another video and link that above or down in the description so I can add that as well. If you have any requests for future videos, any comments, anything you want me to go more in depth on, please do comment below. I really appreciate it. And I really do take the time to go through each comment and make sure I give you an honest reply. And that being said, thank you for watching. Have a great day.